In the book of John, chapter number is 11. Our focal verses are verses 38 through, through 44. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And he that was dead came forth, bound the hand and foot with the grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Amen. Thus in the reading of the text, flower fade, the grass with us, but God's word shall not return unto him void. Let us pray. Father, we bless you. And because of your righteousness and your holiness, we come acknowledging that we adore you and we love you. We pray now for forgiveness of sin, clarity of conversation, and courage while we stand. Allow now the text to live in the heart of the preacher and that it may be received by your people. Jesus, I thank you in advance for what you're about to do through the preaching of this word as it goes forth unhindered and uncompromised and that your perfect will in heaven shall be done here on earth. Bless us now with receptive ears and hearts that we may hear the word, apply the word, and live thereby. In all things, we give thanks and we bless your holy and righteous name. And for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to just talk about the Lazarus experience. The Lazarus experience. John, thank you, as you may retire. You. In this text brings us to a very critical time in the life of some very close friends of Jesus. Uh, Bible readers and scholars know that Jesus had a friendship with Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus. They lived in uh, a community just outside of Jerusalem called Bethany. It was here that Jesus oftentimes found refreshment and rejuvenation and fellowship when he was doing ministry in Jerusalem or he would stay at the home of these three friends. And they developed a very close friendship and fellowship no doubt he told them what he has left on record for us, that whenever you need me, call me. And the Bible declares that there was a day in the life of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus that they needed Jesus. It was a time when he was not near. Therefore, the Bible says they called for a messenger a runner, if you will, and he gave him a note. And his instruction was to find Jesus wherever he is. But the runner went forth and found the master while he was ministering, and he passed the note to Jesus. And all the note said was, the one whom thou lovest is sick. And that's a close relationship. They didn't have to say it was Lazarus. They didn't have to say this is for Martha. 
this for Mary. They just said, the one whom thou lovest is sick. Uh, the Bible says, basically, Jesus folded the note, put it in his pocket, and kept on preaching. Stayed there in that region a little while longer. And then all of a sudden, he said that Lazarus is asleep. Let us go awake him. The disciples say, Master, if he sleepeth, he doth well. And then he said to them, plainly, Lazarus is dead. It's, I got to go back now and, and raise him. I wanted to look at this Lazarus experience simply because in the life of every believer, some things will literally die on us and we'll still be alive. There are problems that confront us. There are situations and circumstances that seek to destroy us. And we are still called upon to have faith in God when it seems like all the air has gone out of our balloon. Any help in this house? The Bible said Jesus shows up some four days late and comes and he's confronted, first of all, with Martha. And she confronts him and says to him, basically, you said you are our friend. I want to talk about this today because there's somebody in this room feel like God has failed you. But I got news for you today. God never fails. Oh, no, he just doing it his own way and at his own time. And what you've got to do is learn how to say, have faith in God that when you don't understand his hand, you can trust his heart. I ought to have a witness in here that he knows. Won't you talk to me now? What's best for me? Sometimes I really don't understand. And sometimes I can't see what God sees. But he knows what's best for me. I ought to have a couple of witnesses in here who can testify that God has brought you through some things. That you really didn't believe you could get out of. I, I promise you if he brings you to it. I got to have a witness in here. He's got the power to take us through it. That's why David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for I'm never alone. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, and your presence is with me. And what Martha had known about Jesus to this point was that he was a healer. And a healer he is. And she believed that had he shown up while there was still breath in Lazarus' body, she believed that he could touch him and he would be healed. She believed he could speak a word and he would be healed. She had known him as a healer. And a healer he is. Yeah, he will. And he can heal your body. He can heal you without medicine. He can heal you with medicine. He can heal you without doctors. He can heal you through doctors. He said, I am Jehovah Rapha, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And I dare suggest strongly to somebody in this room, if you're sick and can't seem to get well, I recommend Jesus. Oh, he'll touch you and you won't never be the same. But what you've got to understand about life, what you've got to understand about trials and tribulations and trouble, pain, problems, perils, and predicaments is that they come into our life to stretch our faith, to let us learn something about God today we didn't know yesterday. And, and that's why the lyrics said it like this when he put pen in the paper. He says, every day is sweeter than the day before. Oh, I tell you, when I have trials in my life, storms come in my life, I get ready for a new revelation of who God is. Because God sends these things to let us know that he's everything that we need. Now Martha's faith in him was to be a healer. Martha's faith with him was to be a deliverer while Lazarus was alive. But when Lazarus breathed, his last breath. He took his lifeless body, bound it in grave clothes, and carried it where you carry dead bodies, to the graveyard, placed him in the tomb, 
rolled the stone over it, came back home. Now they are in a moment of bereavement. Somebody screams out, Yom come Jesus. And Martha, because of her personality, didn't wait for Jesus to get to the house. No, see, sometimes when life do us wrong and mistreat us, we have some things we want to say to God. And they are not praise the Lord. Hallelujah and thank you, Jesus. Uh, come on, talk to me now. Is there anybody else in this room want to blame God and accuse God that somehow God has done you wrong because he didn't let things turn out the way you wanted? Mm. Lord, listen. Martha gets out there. She, 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 she's not concerned about the crowd because Martha, when she wanted to tell you something, she just tell you. This, this is not the first time that she's had a little something to say to Jesus. Y'all remember when y'all remember when Jesus was over by the house one day and fellowshipping and 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 and, and Martha was in the kitchen cooking and Mary was at the feet of Jesus listening and she just burst up in there and said, Lord, you need to make her come in the kitchen and help me. And Jesus had to check Martha then. So y'all wish I had some Yeah, he had to yeah, she 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 just had that that nature of confrontation. She, Martha, then she just said it. And it, came, it was on her mind. She said it. And, 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 and she said to him, in essence, if, if you had a been here. Anybody in the room looking at a situation presently that somehow you feel like if God had to just step in, it wouldn't be in the shape is in right now. Lord, if you had to just move your hand, tumor wouldn't be growing. Lord, if you had to move your hand, I'd still be working. I wouldn't be unemployed. Sometimes we pray about stuff and tell God to move it, change it, rearrange it, deliver us, help us. And it's almost as if God isn't listening. Preach that. I know I'm not the only somebody in this room that have felt like you prayed about it, you prayed about it, and prayed some more about it, and it seemed like the more you prayed about it, the less God listened to what you had to say. Mm. If you had a been here, all of Martha's hope was staked in the appearance of Jesus while Lazarus was living. Her faith was limited to the life of Lazarus. And when Lazarus died, her hope died. She gave up. And, and now in her mind, it is after the fact. But in Jesus' mind, the fact hasn't been made known yet. Oh, you ought to listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I can tell you the money can run out. And God still can provide. I need two people in here that came to have a little church. The body can get sick and seem like it can't get well. And God still can heal. We cannot limit God's ability to our finite mind. If you had been here. How many of you are living with the if you had been here? If you had even cared about me, you would let me go through this. How, oh, Jesus, can you say you love me and allow me to go through this? All these people in this town making fun of us, saying, where is your Jesus now? If you had a been here, my brother would not have died. You helped Jairus and didn't even know him. Bless the woman on the way to his house, didn't know her. You know us, you ate at my table, slept in my bed. I cleaned up behind you and all of your little disciples. See, it really hurts 
Milton, when you think that you done done something for God, and then God lets you down. Then you feel like God owed you something. You ever felt like that? And, and Martha kind of kind of felt like, because she had been so holy, that somehow God ought to have shown her preferential treatment. Can I tell you something? The closer you are to God, the more God lets happen to you. I thought I had somebody who read this Bible that know that the closer you are to God, the more he lets happen to you. Job was close to him. Lost everything that he had. Jesus is his only son. And he got hung on the cross. Hello, hello, hello. Anybody out there listening to me? Why do you think that you are so special? That somehow you walk with God and get close to God and live for God. And then all of a sudden God exempts you from trials, trouble, and tribulation. Paul got caught up into the third heaven, saw things, heard things that had nobody ever heard before. And Paul said, as soon as I got back to earth. Before I could even get my praise on, lest I be exalted above measure, that was sent from the Lord by Satan, a thorn to buffet me in my flesh. And I went to God, reminded God who I was. I told God about what I was trying to do. And God said to me, listen, Paul, I'm not going to move the thorn. I'm going to give you enough grace. Now, let me get this point if you don't get nothing else. Paul, when you are weak. That's why y'all don't want to go through nothing. Because when you go through, you look like you're weak. When you go through, you look at, like you're disadvantaged. And folks kind of look down on you when you're suffering. But I tell you, this too shall pass. Paul, when you're weak, I'm strong. Paul said, now God, you mean to tell me that when I'm down, when I'm hurt, when I'm in trouble, when I'm going through, that you get glory out of my life? Exactly what I'm saying. And then he said, most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmity. I don't mind looking bad for God. I thought I had something. I don't mind suffering for God because I tell you, these light afflictions for this moment don't compare to the reward that God has for those who are willing to suffer. Because if we suffer for him, we shall reign with him. And so we, those who are close, to him sometimes a call to go through things that are painful to us but God gets all the glory out of it and Jesus tried to teach Martha a lesson that I hope you grab today and grasp and get a hold of he said I am the resurrection Martha said to him listen man I, I, I don't have no problem believing in the hereafter I know that when this life is over. We're going to get together. We're going to see each other in the great beyond and the by and by. I do believe the saints of God are going to go to heaven and be with. He said, Martha. 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 Listen to what I say. I am not going to be, not getting ready to become. Not fixing to be. I am the resurrection and the life. If you can just believe this, you won't never die. And if you believe this and die, you'll live again. Now Martha is puzzled and she's confused because he's talking some talk that she's not accustomed to hearing because she's, he's talking about being, being, being the resurrection. And I think really that he was qualified to be able to say that I am. Mm. Oh, you remember years ago when a man stood at a burning bush and raised a question said, 
when I get down there and they ask me who sent me, what am I supposed to tell them? And, and God says to him, tell them that I am. That I am have sent you. And when you deal with this God, you are dealing with a God who can say I am. And it be a complete sinner. I thought I had some help in here. I, I'm not that small when it comes down to English. Every once in a while I speak a little English. But now I do know if you say I am, then you better have something to back up your talk. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And then Jesus, the Bible said, is, 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 is moved by what they're going through at the Mary arises, I cut across, and, and now and, and he saw Mary crying and Martha crying. And verse 33 says, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled and says to them something strange. Now, they have made, they have not lied to him. They have not suggested to him nothing. They, they said, look, he's dead and he's where dead folks supposed to be. And he said, where have you laid him? Verse 34. And they say, come and see. And 35 tells me how much he cares. If you don't get nothing else, you ought to understand that you're not in it by yourself. Tell your neighbor, you're not in it by yourself. I, I don't care what it is. It may not be anybody else's business. And nobody else may know about it. But you're not in this by yourself. The songwriter said, never alone. I don't know how long never is, but Grimmage, but it's long enough for me never alone. He promised. To never leave me alone. And, and Jesus cries. God Almighty. He cries. He cries. Verse 35 says, and Jesus, well, didn't try to hold back the tears. He cries and he cries and he weeps so much so until the Jews testify, saying, behold how he loved him. He, he didn't just, he didn't just, he wept. It was visible emotion. They saw him crying. Tears lapping under his chin. He cried. Jesus wept. Then listening to the naysayers in 37 as I hurry on. And some of them said, Lord, have mercy. Isn't it just a shame? Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused even this man that he should not have died? The faith still stops at the grave. See, God want to stretch your faith a little further. So your faith stops at the pill bottle. When the medicine runs out, you don't think you can get well. Your faith stops at the bank account. When you're broke, you don't think you can make it. Your faith goes to the limit of your friends. When folks walk off and leave you, you think you can't survive. God wants you to understand that when everything else has failed you, it's just right for him. Can I get any help in here? Somebody know what I'm talking about. That you didn't really know what God could do until you fell down and couldn't get up. Could not he have keep, kept him rather from dying? Can I tell y'all something free? He let him die on purpose. I'm out, I'm out, I'm through here. He intended for him to die. Watch this progression. Watch this progression. He, he goes by Jairus' house and his daughter is at the point of death. She's not dead. She's at the point of death. And she has just closed her eyes and he says to her daughter, arise. He gets her right after death. See, she could have been in a coma. See, they, their burial process is not like our burial process. If you die... You are buried before sundown. Yeah. 
because they don't believe in embalming. And so when you die, you die in the morning, they wrap you in a shroud, they take you to the grave. What family members are there, go with you, they mourn, they bury you. They ain't holding you out in no 7, 14 days. They bury you the same day you die. You watch the news, you see them Palestinians and, and those Israelis walking through the streets holding those bodies. Those folk just died. Ain't no laying out waking nobody. They, they put them in the grave. So Lazarus didn't just die. He's been dead four days. He went by Jared's house and woke that girl up as soon as she died within hours. Then the same day, a fella died. They had prepared him. He was on his way to the graveyard, coming out the city of Nain. And Jesus knew that the woman husband had already died. And this was her oldest child, had compassion on her, told the pallbearers, stand still. Tell the grave diggers, close the grave. Told the young man, get up and turn a funeral procession into a family reunion. Won't he do it? I said, won't God do it? He can turn it around if you just have faith in him. And, and that, now, now, now what? Here we go. That was ours. This guy was almost in the grave. But today, in the text, Lazarus has been wrapped. He's been carried. He's been laid. The stone's been rolled up. And he's been in there four days. It's important to understand he's there four days. Because they believed that if you went in sleep and woke up within three days, you just was in a coma. Four days, they wrote you off, partner. They wrote you off, partner. You just was gone four days. She says that he stinketh in the grave now. But see, when some stuff die on you, it starts smelling. Relationships can be broken and smell. Credit can be messed up and smell. Employment status can be messed up and smell. That's one thing, you know, when when you can smell it. But there's another thing when other folks go to smell it. It's because Junior walking around with a stanky situation. And he smelt it. But then somebody else said, hey, Junior, come here, let me smell you. So now the whole house know that Junior got a stanky situation. I'm trying to make a point here. You're going to lose my train of thought. See, your interpersonal relationships are broken, but don't nobody know it right now, but you, and it stinks. But then all of a sudden, somebody else noticed that y'all ain't getting along like you used to. So now it's stinking to everybody. Then folks start coming up to you, well, child, whatever you need, just let me know. I, I do what I can. If I had time, I'd interpret that tongue for you because that ain't what they mean. They just got a close enough to you to verify that there's some wall stinking. So now they go on and tell everybody how bad you smell. Child, the cable ain't the only thing off in there. They ain't got no light stinking situation. Child, they ain't just broke up. He done moved out. How do you handle it when you can no longer hide it? The odor of your pain is on the wings of the morning. Everybody smells. 
They were lying to us. They got a speeding ticket. They got caught with drugs. Stanky situation. He stinketh by. Four days. No hope. All the love gone. All the joy gone. And Jesus goes to the graveyard and tell them to take away the stone. And close them up. I need to tell somebody, God isn't going to do for you what you can do for yourself. You can quit praying about God healing your marriage and you ain't doing your part. You can talk about your spouse all you want to. You got to get where you're supposed to be. You got to do what you're supposed to do. And when you do your part, then God does his part. When you talk about praying for a bad child, be a good parent. You're talking about a mean supervisor, be a good worker. You got to get where God can help you. Take away the stuff you can take away. You can be smiling if ain't nobody else smiling. You can be nice if ain't nobody else being nice. You can be good if ain't nobody else being good. Do your part. Take away the stone. What's standing between you and your blessing? You want God to do it, but then you won't do what you're supposed to. Jesus could have said stone move and it had been moved. But he says to them, take ye away the stone. And, and Martha Thea comes in. She said, look, don't, don't embarrass us. Don't embarrass us. You can't see the body now. He's dead. 39. He's dead. And he stinketh. For he's been dead four days. We've been in this predicament for four years. We, we've been in this predicament ever since, ever since Lulabelle was born. We, this, this ain't just started. This, 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 you've been going through this for a while. Anybody got one of them situations that has been like this for a while? You keep getting quiet on me. I don't think I'm, gonna, I'm driving down your street. It's been like this for a while. It's been like this so long until I've gotten used to the stick and I can deal with it. Can I talk about me? So I have to fight you later. Real boys don't like the babe. And real boys will go out and play cowboys and Indian, shoot marble, play basketball, go home, get in the bed. Real boys. Do I have any real boys in the house? My mama is always, I'd pass by mama and she said, come here, boy. When the last time you bathed? I'm talking about me, so I have to talk about nobody else later. I said, well, what day? She said, day Wednesday. I said, I bathe Sunday. <laughs> now watch this, watch this. Your body gives off an odor. But if you ain't careful, you can get used to the odor. Now mama couldn't get used to that odor. I had gotten used to it. I didn't smell nothing. I got used to the stink. So I got used to being in a bad marriage. I moved into the other room. I got used to being in a bad relationship, so I said it was my fault I got hit. I got used to being in a bad situation and I said it was my fault I got molested. Yeah. 
We get used to the odor. It's stinky. But we get used to it. And we adjust and we deal with it. And we don't want nobody to pull the stone back because if they pull the stone back, we'll find out just how stinky it is. By now he's thinking, don't embarrass us, don't uncover this situation. But the only way you can be healed from a stinky situation is you got to expose the source of the odor. You can't call me boo when I use you for a boxing bag. That's not normal. That's not natural. That ain't how it's supposed to be. You don't have enough makeup to hide it. Can't miss enough days off work to cover it up. You didn't fall down the stairs. You didn't bump into the door. He hit you side your head. I know you can't help me now. I understand. But don't tell it because it's going to mess the family up. Family already messed up. Now you're going to ask me to suffer in silence for another 15 years because my uncle put his hands on me? Stanky situations. Stone need to be pulled back. It need to be pulled back. You know that boy been stealing your medicine there since you've been on that Vicodin. But you keep talking about, I can't remember I took one or took two. You took one. Roll the stone back. The other five, he took them and sold them. Lord, if you had been here, and my brother had not died. Lord, if you had cared about me, I wouldn't have gone through what I've been through. It wouldn't have happened to me. You'd have gave me the right man. You'd have gave me the right child. You'd have put me in the right situation. Still God's fault. Still God's fault. How many of us in this room this morning blaming God? It's easy to do. I promise it is because my faith teaches me nothing happened without his permission. And had not my faith been mature and correct and straight and understand that he's sovereign, I could have blamed him a few days ago. But I understand better than that. He said that Lazarus died it's good for you. I was not there when he got sick. Because you would never know when I'm finna show you. Ain't you tired of the little faith you got? Don't you want your faith stretched? Don't you want your faith to get some muscles? Don't you want your faith to grow? Don't you want to believe more about God? And if you want to do that, then he has to take you through some things. At that bush, Moses didn't want to go, and he's talking about why he couldn't go. God told him to put that rod down. That rod turned to a snake. He picked it back up. It turned back to a rod, put his hand in his garment. It was leprous. He put it back. It was healed. He said, I'm ready to go. The more I deal with God and the more God teaches me and show me, the more I believe he's able to do whatever needs to be done. Read why you don't believe nothing because you don't want to go through nothing. And what better family to have this tragedy happen to than the one that was close to Jesus? The one whom thou lovest, 
Jesus and Lazarus was tight, y'all. He said, roll the stone away. Martha said, he'd been stinking, been in the grave. Four days, Jesus said to her, said I not unto you that as I would is believe that thou shouldest see the glory of God. Notice in the text, he doesn't say to her, you got to do anything but believe. See, your problem is that you're trying to figure out how God's going to do it. Can I tell you something? You'll never figure out how he's going to do it. Got a family member sick, pray for him to be healed and die. He's still God. Get a three-day lay off, pray to keep your job, go back home, go back to work, they fire you. He's still God. You pray, God, let the man stay. You go home, all his clothes gone. He got the key on the dresser. He's still God. And we got to stop judging God by what happened to us in our lives because God knows everything before it happened and he got power to change it whenever he gets ready. Sometimes God wants us to go through the valley so we can realize he's walking with us. Help me, somebody. Oh, I thank God for my hard days. I thank God for my days filled with tears, with my heart broken and feeling like I've been mistreated. I thank God for those days because through it all, I've learned how to trust in him, how to lean on him, how to depend on him, how to wait on him because you do know you can't hurry, God. No, no. You have just got to. You just got to wait on Wait on him. Yes, Lord, the Bible is the right. Yes, when it says they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. The Bible says if you wait on him, you shall mount up on wings as eagles. The Bible says if you wait on the Lord, you will run and not be weary. If you wait on him, you can walk and you will not fall out. Wait, I say, upon the Lord because he will show up on time. Yes, he will. I've kept you much too long, but the Bible said that the Lord, the Lord Jesus got to the grave and looked towards heaven. Do y'all hear me? And if your circumstances is going to change, you've got to have a little talk with Jesus. Because it will. It'll make everything all right. Have I got a witness in the house who prayed about it and put it in the Lord's hand? Didn't, didn't, didn't he work it out? When I couldn't have figured it out, the Lord had already worked it out. Good afternoon, y'all. Thank you for coming today. The Bible said Jesus looked toward heaven and I heard him say, Father, do y'all hear me? I thank thee as thou hast heard me in days past and gone. Can I do the witness in here now? I thank you, Daddy, that you know me and I know you and I'm not calling on you because of I don't believe you're able. But Jesus said, uh, for these standing around me, uh, these doubters uh, and these naysayers, uh, I want you uh, to hear me uh, when I call. Good God, uh, see, I want you to hear me now uh, because I know you've heard uh, me in times past. Uh, because I was there, daddy, when you said, let there be, uh, and there was. Uh, I was there daddy when you separated the land with water I was there daddy when you said let there be light and the sun start shining oh lord 
Uh, anybody know he was there? I was there when you put the stripes on the zebra, uh, hopping the kangaroo, uh, and the bounce on the gazelle. I was there when you scooped out the ocean bed, uh, piled up lofty mountain, uh, and hid that nakedness uh, with a robe of cloud, uh, and crowned their head uh, with a diadem of snow. Uh, I was there when uh, you made, yes, Lord, the grass uh, and tacked it down with holly hots, uh, daffodils, and buttercups. Uh, I was there when you took your finger uh, and dug up the Grand Canyon uh, and called the river base to run south uh, and they never stopped running. I was there when you said, let us make man uh, in our image uh, and after all like this, uh, I was there when you took the dust of the end, uh, mixed it with a little water, uh, and form man uh, in your likeness, uh, and then breathe uh, into his nostril the breath of life. Uh, so I'm not calling you daddy, because I don't believe that you are able. But for these ones standing around me, and see sometimes you have to let God put you in a position where everybody know you're down. Let God put you in a plane where everybody know you're in jail. Let God put you in a plane where everybody know you did it and you're guilty. I promise you, he's got power. Power! I say you got power. If I can get one saint in here to be a witness, that God pick you up one day when you had fallen down. Shouldn't be here right now, but God pick you up. Do I have a witness in here now that know you shouldn't have made it, but you're still alive? Anybody in the room gonna testify? Well, come on and celebrate with me if you know it was grace that brought you saved thus far. Hey! All shucks up in here. You ought to have been there. And Jesus looked toward heaven and said, Father, I want you to hear me. But be standing around. Look what he done, y'all. He called. The Bible said he called Lazarus in a loud voice. Lazarus! Yes, Lord. And Lazarus told him on the other side. He said, hush, sound like somebody calling my name. That was came out of that graveyard. I wish I had somebody there. Let me know when you ride up out of stinking situation, you will still look like, yes, Lord, you've been through something. You look like you just came out of something. But I heard Jesus saying, I loose him and let him go. Great God Almighty, when the Lord bring you out, when the Lord deliver you, when the Lord pick you up, when the Lord change it, you ought to live like you've been changed. Can I get two people in the house who know that right now you don't look like what you've been through? I need somebody in here that ain't too holy to celebrate. If the Lord brought you out, if the Lord deliver you uh, if the Lord uh, pick you up uh, if the Lord uh, made a way for you uh, you ain't too holy uh, to help the little preacher uh, let me hear you say ah, shout it ah, ah, ain't he alright uh, Oh, yeah. 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 Lazarus came forth out the grave. And Jesus said he has on the wrong clothes. Loose him and let him go. <laughs> 